Let's talk about how to do some QRT PCR on the Quant Studio 6 and Quant Studio 7 that we have here. They operate pretty um, similarly, but make sure that you just keep in mind when you're booking equipment, whether you're using 96 or 384 well format, we keep those blocks in these machines basically permanently unless you need to run many plates at a time, at which point we have extra blocks to do, let's say, 384s on both machines or 96 on both machines. We also have the Step 1 Plus, um, which I believe that's 96 well format. Um, that will be a separate video, but that in that, with that you could potentially run three 96 well plates at the same time, all calibrated for very simple, the same dies, uh, the Step 1 Plus having one extra die. Come to our quant, hit the power button on the touch screen, it's gonna take a second. While we do that, we can open this Quant Studio real-time PCR software. And it plays a little song for us. Let's hit the eject button. The tray is ejected. And then depending on uh, which system you're using, the insert will be a little bit different, but you can put your samples in. Uh, if you're using a plate, make sure you line up. A1 has to line up with where it's marked on the tray. We hit eject again to close it. We come to experiment setup. Name your experiment. Since we are on the Quant Studio 6, we want to pick the correct one. And then make sure this is, we have to set this to 96 well. A uh, note, depending on which insert is inserted, it may change whether you pick fast or standard 96 well. Typically, you'll set this to comparative CT, depending on what you're doing. TACMAN or cyber reagents, you want to pick that. I typically use cyber, so I'll keep that selected. Um, and then if you're using another reagent, you want to define that here. And then many of my kits are just the standard um, standard kit. So if you're not using a fast cyber green or fast TACMAN system, make sure that you select standard. And then we want to include a melt curve so that we can look at the end to make sure that we only have one PCR product uh, that you don't have some sort of contaminating product in your reaction. We then go to define. Um, targets will be like your genes. So let's say we, ha we are looking at, oh, let's say um, my favorite G protein, uh, GNAL1, which is for G alpha O, the gene for that. And then we're looking at a housekeeping control um, like uh, GAPDH. Reporter is already marked as cyber, no quencher for this case. This is just saying what, how it's coded. Then we have samples. So let's say I have, um, you know, mouse one, mouse two, and mouse three. You can define those. And then we keep our passive reference as rocks, which is in the cyber master mix. Uh, you could change that, for example, if you were using. Um, Mustang, purple, or something else is your passive reference. We come to this setup. What we want to do is select our wells. So let's say these first 12 wells are all mouse one. We click that. GNA01. This is still mouse one, but it's gap DH. We could say, okay, this is all mouse two. And then we could come through and hit our gene, GNA01, and these ones are gap DH. Um, and then I'll just do this really quick because it's going to yell at me if I don't use my third sample. We go to our run method. We can alter our method. So I typically, in my protocols, um, delete this, this very first stage, this very first step. I do the 10-minute hold at 95 to activate the polymerase. And then you can set up your PCR cycles as desired. So sometimes I add an extra temperature step here. So I'm not gonna add a stage because that would add like an entire new section of my experiment with cycles, but I can add a step here after. And then in my protocol, I do part of it at 55 and part of it at 60. Um, and I can, for example, change the time. So if I wanna change this to be um, 30 seconds at each temperature, I can modify these times here. Oops, I said three seconds. The number of cycles is changeable and then you can leave your melt curve as is um, because that will do it according to how it is set in the machine. Then we go to run. 
which shows our samples and our amplification plot. If you had something in the machine, which we currently don't, you would hit start run. Um, and this made, I think this, yeah, you would hit the drop down and then select this option, which will start the run. Also, you can check the temperature plot. You can refer back to the method while it's running. When you get to analysis, this will allow you to um, look at your amplification plot, and then there are ways to export your values. Um, you can pick whether you want to export the sample setup, your results, your melt curve, um, and your amplification data, which fields you want, and you can export and save onto the disk. Um, and that should be about it. We can close this down. And of course, when you're done, you want to remove your plate and hit the power button. Please do turn it off when you're done. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, uh, and happy PCR.